Basically, Ben Davies has been speaking to Gavin Jules in an exclusive interview. And one part of the interview really did stand out. Here it is. So, Brendan Rogers was the manager. Um, pretty crazy situation. First day, we arrive at the training centre, which was a health club, <laughs> which for us, I, 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 it sounds crazy this. now, but like that's what we were dealing with. And that was, we didn't have our own training ground. As a youth team, we used to arrive at the stadium, do all our chores, a minibus to the local pitch at the university, and then minibus back to shower there. Um, no breakfast, no lunch, yeah. like we get now, whereas the first team had the health club, which was a <laughs> big deal for us. So this is basically a gym, right? This is a gym. There, there's, there's, there's women like in <laughs> spandex doing like kickboxing in the next room. I mean, it wasn't that fancy a gym. There's but. women doing... No, it was like it was a semi fancy gym. It was a lower, like <laughs> for us, but there's you know, there's a little cafe area where people were having their coffees when we turned up in the morning. We had a little roped off conservatory where uh, the first team could have some scrambled eggs if you wanted it when you came in, but we all had a pass, we all had to let ourselves in. We used to go to the public, That's a public changing team. room. This yeah. is a Premier League. And this is yeah. not a Premier League in the nineteen seventies. You yeah, are yeah, not yeah. that this old. We're like, thirty years no. old, right? Yeah. And this, this is, is just twelve years ago. Yeah, 12 yeah. years ago when Swansea first it arrived. It blows in the my League. mind. And um, yeah, we used to change in the public gym, the public locker room. With, with random people. With random like, people who would be like, oh, good game on the weekend. One of those, or if it wasn't such a good game, they'd probably let you know as well. Yeah. Okay. So, we had, so we had managers. Brendan Rogers would have been there. Chris Davis, who now works at Spurs with me, yeah. would attest to this being exactly the same. The manager's office was under the stairs in the health club. It had like a little code. <laughs> And when Christmas time came, he got kicked out for Santa to go in there for the for the kids. It was it, it was crazy. It was crazy. So basically, what we're trying to say is, it's not all glitz and glam when you're a professional footballer. We wanted to get some of the stories of the panel from the guys of something that might have surprised us as to it not being all glitz and glam as a pro. <laughs> well, when I came over to the US, I was the head coach of the Boston Bulldogs, and uh, and what is the USL? And we played a game in North Carolina uh, on the Saturday and we were flying back on the first flight in the morning to Boston, which was leaving around 6.15, 6.30. And so to save money, we didn't get a hotel. <laughs> so we finished the game on the Saturday. We found a beach club <laughs> and we stayed there until they threw us out about 12.30, 1 o'clock in the morning. And then we found a waffle house... <laughs> And we all piled into the Waffle House. With your wash bags? All, well, no, we left them on the bus. Because what we did was, instead of buying the rooms, he hired the, the general manager, Joe Bradley, hired the bus for the whole night. So we left everyone, all the gear, everyone was in the bus. Get in the Waffle House, something to eat. And, of course, we're looking for filling in time. So what we did was, half a dozen of the boys told the girls behind the counter to go and sit down, and they brought them a cup of coffee and all the rest of it, and the lads washed the dishes, dragged them and put them all away. <laughs> <laughs> and we got chucked out of there. It was shot at about three in the morning. Drove to the airport, sat in the car park to because the airport was still closed. We sat in the car park till about five o'clock, and then we all piled in and we got the first flight back to Boston at six thirty. And it actually turned out to be a, it was a great exercise <laughs> in bonding because everybody actually enjoyed themselves. And a great way to ensure you sleep on the flight home. Well, listen, hotel rooms are overrated. I'm telling you. <laughs> Shaka, anything stand out to you? I don't know. I don't know how, can, I don't know how to follow that. I, I'll be honest. I Beach mean, clubs and you no, know. No, no, nothing of his sort. I mean, obviously this is before Ben Davis' time, but at Newcastle we trained at, at, at Durham University's ground. So when when the university had sports day or something of the sort, we had to go train elsewhere. Usually St James's Park, um, but we didn't have a home of our own either. Um, and then even before that, and, and then this is lower league at Reading, there was one point where we didn't have access to the training ground. The training ground was, was privately held um, by a, a gentleman called Martin Dina, who was in, in oil. Um, so we, we train on, 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 in a public park in, in the centre of town. And you'd have to send, you'd have to send like, the kit man out or something early in, the, early in the morning, find somewhere that people hadn't walked their dogs. <laughs> just, let me just put it that, that, that way. And kind of put cones up. So to at least suggest to people, you know, well, don't walk your dog here because something's about to happen here. And we train in a public park, and, and that went on for a while. And then, of course, but now, 
you, you don't know where it's going to be because the kit man has to go out before and see where it's clean. So as a team, you walk to the public park and just kind of go walking around until you find the kit man. Oh that, that, was, that was par for the course. Surely this didn't happen to our World Cup winners tonight. Surely it was all glamorous Impossible. for you, Jürgen, and you don't have any stories like this. Well, I, I think, you know, most of the professional players, even today, uh, which, you know, obviously live in a different time with social media and all the interest from all over the place, I, I think they love the simplicity of life as well. Like we did, you know, we we love to be to go around the street, to around the corner, and have a, a whatever a hot dog or a fish and chips, and and have a beer here and there in, in a pub, you know, like everybody else. I think that's uh, um, that's even the generation of today wants to hang out together and wants to go out and want to enjoy their time in in a very simple way. Obviously, with the media today being a completely different landscape as it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, it, it's different because as soon as they go in the pub and as soon as they order the first beer, you know, they are the first <laughs> cell phones already taking photos and uh, five minutes later it, it goes viral. But um, the players themselves, I think they, they still like that as well, like we did in our days. And, uh, and I think that will also continue the, to, to ask always for, for a simple lifestyle and uh, being happy, being happy with where you are and what you do. Frank, what were your experiences of when it wasn't so glamorous? Uh, when I signed for Chelsea, I uh, didn't know what to expect. I was coming from Strasbourg when he had, we had our own facilities, uh, very nice pitch, nice dressing room. And I signed for Chelsea where Ruth Gullit, Mark Hughes, Craig Burley, uh, Gianfranco Zola, Gianluca Vialli, <laughs> some very nice names from people who, know, who, know, who have known the, 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 the top of the top. And we, we, I arrived the first day, and I discovered the training, the training ground before going, before being at Cobham. They were, we were at Arlington, uh, in between. It was a landscape between the the motorway, the freeway, um, going outside of London, and uh, Heathrow Airport, uh, Heathrow Airport. So we had to um, to stop talking for like 10 minutes when the Concorde was taking off because it was too noisy. <laughs> that was very windy. That was horrible. I was, we were sharing also the dressing room with the uh, hockey on grass team. I don't know if you say that, but uh, that's, what it was, it, yes. that's what it was. And, but that was so nice. That was so funny. Um, I saw the young John Terry, you know, uh, being, a, uh, um, uh, how do you say, um, uh, the, 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 boot, the boot guy, you know? Apprentice. And uh, yeah. that was the beginning... Of, uh, yes, exactly. That was the beginning of the new era of Chelsea. And I was in 96. But I was perfect for the atmosphere to stay down to, on Earth and to experience and, uh, and build up something that was perfect. And I regret Harlington. <laughs> regret a lot. Oh, <laughs> Frank missing it. Oh, the days of boot boys and all oh. those things. I love all the old stories.